has there been any you know unfortunate death during your uh, surgery yes there have been deaths uh, of very few but the first death you always remember just like the first surgery well i was in my first term in jj hospital doing as a house surgeon i was the junior most in the unit so this particular patient came with a stab chest uh, stab wound in his chest okay so he was alive when he was brought into the casualty सर्जरी सिंप्लीफाइड शस्त्रकला सरल शब्दों में हेलो नमस्ते वेलकम टू आवर YouTube चैनल सर्जरी सिंप्लीफाइड शस्त्रकला सरल शब्दों में मेरा नाम है ऐश्वर्या और आज मेरे साथ हैं डॉक्टर निखिल बलजेकर नमस्ते नमस्ते व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वी आर हियर टू डिस्कस एंड एक्सप्लोर द वंडरस वर्ल्ड ऑफ सर्जरी हाय डॉक्टर वेलकम टू द शो थैंक यू Uh, so doctor you are very well known in your own fraternity but for all of you was out there who is dr nikhil baljekar and how did it all start well i am a consultant surgeon now practicing since 42 years in the sense that i started surgery at 19, 1982 i joined uh, grant medical college mm. at baikala mumbai mm. in the year 1977 and first 5 years as you know is undergraduate or mbbs up that 5 years of postgraduate residency program in surgery okay. also in jj hospital grant medical okay okay and then since 1987 i have been consultant surgeon in my private practice okay so since you said you started quite a long back so can you let us know about the college that you attended and how was it back at that time yes Actually, if you have seen the movie Munna by MBBS, yes, all yes. of us. <laughs> <laughs> so the medical college that Sanjay that goes to was mm-hmm. shot in our anatomy hall. Okay, all the viewers, please note that out. <laughs> <laughs> so, in fact, uh, very recently we had some, some something like the 200th anniversary of our college in 2013. Oh, wonderful! And at that time uh, we had a get together, mm-hmm. and the surprise move. was they got woman irani dressed up like the jean dean he was in the oh, movie okay. and then he came and conducted the entire program it was very nice oh, it was a get together of people right from the i think the 50s <laughs> and uh, we felicitated some of our stalwart uh, teachers okay yes okay. So it was a nice program so when i joined in 1977 baikala where this uh, college is it is one of the largest colleges in campus uh-huh. in bombay Forty-four acres. That's huge. Yes, there are four gates where four bus stops are. Mm. It has fourteen gates. Okay. Yes, and it's okay. spread in lush green uh, background, mm. and each department has its own building, which is a Gothic style, old British style building built of stone. Okay. okay. That's where the anatomy building, where the movie was shot. Okay. So we have school of anatomy, school of physiology, biochemistry, pharmacology, and so on. Mm. And the main hospital building itself. is about a uh, if i'm not wrong 1200 bed hospital okay and uh, it has another set of hospitals within the campus so that's why it's known as jj group of hospitals okay yes and why jj group because sir jj donated the first 1 lakh rupees at that time mm-hmm. way back in the early 19th century to build the new building it was sir grant who was the president of uh, bombay presidency in 1845 who actually started the college and grant medical college is one of the oldest colleges in india along with calcutta and madras mm. so it's there since 1845 and we say you go any pair in the world you'll find a gm site <laughs> okay that's one of nice nice so then after my mbbs i joined residency program yeah. inside in jj yeah. so residency is basically a very intense hands on program where right from day 1 you are you know in the operation theater either assisting or operating on your own depending on what is your previous knowledge yeah. so there are six units of surgery and each unit has about eight people in that starting with the professor associate professor reader lecturer 
and then four residents, two seniors, two juniors. Okay. And at any time in a unit in surgery, we have around 60 people under our care. That means the, the male and female ward together. The capacity is around 45 beds, but we have floor beds because mm. there was no space. And all of them mm. uh, are major surgical cases because minor surgical cases are done on outpatient basis. They are not even admitted. Okay. okay. Yes. And our, our week starts with, uh, you know, either a surgical day or an OPD or a post-op day. Mm. So in a week, we used to have two surgery days. Two surgeries a day? Two, two surgical days. days okay. Two days in a week, we had surgery mm. because there are six units. And mm. so each of us had to share the operation theatre. Okay. On each operation day, we used to do between about 10 to 15 surgeries between the eight of us and uh, two post-op days mm. and uh, two pre-op days and one day of emergency on which from 8 o'clock in the morning to next day 8 o'clock, all cases of surgery that come to JJ hospital are admitted under our care okay. and we need to do a lot of emergency surgeries in addition to this. So it's a very intense hands-on thing and uh, most of us were expected to stay in the campus 24 by 7 because even on our non-emergency days mm. we always had some patients either just operated or going to be operated and so on. Mm. So since 60 patients almost on average are under our care, mm. there was no chance for us to go and stay at home. Okay. So like 4-5 years we are there in the hospital all the time. Oh my god. Yes that's... and along with this we are also supposed to attend clinics, present right. papers, write a thesis, attend conferences and so on. Oh my god, you are a very busy surgeon Dr. Nikhil, I must say. <laughs> yes, actually it's good to be busy because surgery is a craft which becomes better with practice. Okay. And the longer you do a surgery, the better you become, you know, both ways. That is, what? how do you become better? Mm. One is the time that you take to do the surgery becomes less. Mm. You tend to take on more difficult cases and still do them in a shorter time. You are able to avoid surgery where otherwise you may have operated. <laughs> because right. uh, the, the effect of a good surgeon right. and a great surgeon is a great surgeon can avoid unnecessary surgery. That's true. That's another, <laughs> another classification of a good and great surgeon is if a, a great surgeon is one who can treat his complications. Hmm. So if hmm. any surgeon tells you that I didn't have complications, there are only two conclusions. And what Either he is a liar or he never operated. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, so complications are a part of surgery. Uh -huh. But how you treat them and how you tackle them is what differentiates the good and the great. Mm -hmm. So, I've had my fair share of complications and I'm glad to say that at least most of them went out walking on their two feet, That's not right. carried out upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Nikhil, everyone remembers their firsts, like, you know, first day of school. Of course, not us, but our mothers remember, but, you know, the first day at high school, first day of graduation, first day of job. Tell us about your first day at surgery. Well. I would not put it as the first day at surgery because mm. uh, I was lucky to get internship at Thana Civil Hospital instead of JJ. Okay. We had the choice. Somebody would choose Thana Civil and JJ. In Thana Civil, interns, that is between MBBS and starting surgery, mm. were allowed to do a lot more in the wards because they did not have any residents there. So, am I right to assume that you did your first surgery when you were an intern? Yes. Oh, oh wow, that's yes. nice. And the first surgery, the date was May 14, 1981. It happens to be my sister's birthday. Okay. And what I did was remove a stone from the bladder. Okay. Of course, under the assistance of the medical officer there. Uh -huh. But he allowed me to do that surgery. So that was the first surgery that I did. So I'm sure after the surgery, you went and celebrated with your sister. Obviously. No, not with my sister because my sister was not there okay. in Bombay that time. But All right. we were expected to give a treat to the medical officer right. for allowing us to operate. Another question that I want to put ahead of you is, has there been any you know, unfortunate deaths during your uh, surgery? Yes, there have been deaths uh, of very few, but the first death you always remember, just like the first surgery. Well, I was in my first term in JJ hospital doing as a house surgeon, I was the junior most in the unit and surrounding JJ hospital is an area called Dongri. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty violent area and a lot of stab injuries do come there. Mm -hmm. In fact, my thesis for my MS was penetrating injuries of the abdomen. So this particular patient came with a stab chest, a stab wound in his chest. 
ओके सो ही वाज अलाइव व्हेन ही वाज ब्रॉट इनटू द कैजुअलिटी इट वाज आवर इमरजेंसी दैट डे आई वाज ऑन ड्यूटी अलोंग विद अदर डॉक्टर्स ही इमीडिएटली स्टार्टेड रिससिटेशन गॉट ब्लड केप्ट हिम अलाइव देन आई कॉल्ड द कार्डियोथोरेसिक सर्जन प्रेसिडेंट सो ही केम डाउन ही सेड सी ही इज नॉट फिट टू टेक टू द ऑपरेशन थिएटर व्हिच इज ऑन द फिफ्थ फ्लोर if at all we have to do anything we have to do it here i said fine let us do that is his only chance we took a consent oral consent only and i remember i ran five steps five stairs up i didn't want to wait for the lift also and got the sterile instruments from the cardiothoracic operation theater and we brought it there put screens all around him and the resident opened the chest and tried to save him you know the the stab wound had gone through his heart and okay. the blood was all around and around the heart and this so he removed the thing sutured the wound and uh, closed the chest in fact we had to press his heart to wake him up kind of you know give him what is known as intra thoracic cardiac pre- uh, compression you give external cardiac compression this is intra thoracic so we tried and uh, he said no i don't think he is going to make it so i said no 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 i want to do it. because you know when you are young you are little more idealistic and you are you don't know when to stop so i said i was for half an hour pressing his heart mm. and they all told me enough is enough let's close up and declare him dead so that was the first uh, death that i saw as a resident not directly under my care in the sense but a death all the same okay moving on to some very good questions <laughs> um so you started with your you know surgery profession quite a long ago uh, you know the technologies back then and now and during your course of practicing there has been you know technological changes yes. and so on and so forth so when you were practicing and are practicing what kind of you know evolution have you seen yes. in surgery a lot a lot uh, the first few years was not much mm-hmm. but somewhere in the 90s early yeah. 90s maybe mid 90s uh, keyhole surgery became uh came into being oh. keyhole surgery means normal surgery traditional surgery is mm. done with an incision okay it is still the gold standard mm-hmm. means if you have problem with any other kind of surgery ultimately you have to resort to opening and tackling the complication mm. but now what is done a lot of surgery is done a small hole is made and a telescope is inserted inside mm. it's attached to a camera camera is attached to a monitor instruments are put through such small holes right. and the operation is done by inflating the abdomen with carbon dioxide gas this is known as laparoscopic surgery or keyhole surgery in this there is an addition of laser as a method of operating because it works very well it doesn't bleed much and it is very precise so this surgery has revolutionized because a there is no incision b the recovery is much faster mm. see there being magnification the the actual steps of surgery are far more precise and four there is a what you call as a deeper areas in the body where if you have to ac- access them like the kidneys from the front or the adrenal glands or the big vessels in the body you really need to take big incisions mm. but because these are long instruments they go very easily in the deeper areas right. and therefore those kind of surgeries which earlier were difficult with open surgery are actually easier with laparoscopic surgery and now it has advanced to such an extent that even cancer surgery is done through laparoscopy okay yeah okay. one more innovation which has come is robotic surgery where the same thing which we do with hands is now attached to a robot and the surgeon sits in an ante room uh-huh. and get the operate yeah jo- yeah he operates with a joystick Joystick. Oh, yeah, wow. joystick. The <laughs> the the uh, the instruments, it's which like, is attached to a robot. It's it's like playing video yes, games. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's <laughs> like playing video games. Actual surgery is yes. going on over there. So it has improved the longevity of dinosaur surgeons like us. <laughs> because <laughs> that's a very funny term, by the way, dinosaur surgeons. Yes, because what happens is that as you grow old, obviously you you get you may get tired holding Correct. the instruments and your fine Very movement nice. which are required are not may, that precise yes yeah. they are not precise so here what happens is because the the instruments are held by a machine hmm. there is no much movement in the sense there is no much tremor or no movement at all okay and therefore a uh, uh, older surgeon also is now kind of given a new lease of life the hmm. only big problem is that it's very expensive the mach- the machine itself is very expensive so right now it is not you know widely available okay, but okay. coming in the few years it will be available then of course you have heard of the other fields like interventional cardiology where they do angioplasty mm-hmm. through this instead of bypass 
then there is the gastroendoscopist who put the telescope from the mouth or from the backside and do yeah, surgeries. Yeah, I have seen a lot of videos, right. like those animated videos. Yes, animated and actual videos. So there also you can do a lot of things mm. which otherwise needed open surgery. Okay. And then we have the interventional radiologists, our colleagues who insert uh, similar uh, catheters like the ones for angioplasty mm -hmm. and they are able to stop bleeding in the skull, uh, brain or stop bleeding in the abdomen or if there's a big tumor with a big vessel, you can shrink the tumor so that it is easily operable afterwards by blocking the main vessel. Mm. So these guys are known as interventional radiologists. Okay. So interventional radiologists, interventional endoscopists, interventional cardiologists and urologists. Okay. They also use telescopes to remove stones oh, instead wow. of making cuts through the telescope or okay. use laser to break it. Okay, okay. So, Dr. Nikhil, please tell our viewers uh, what came to your mind in you know, starting this channel, Surgery Simplified, and what do you have in store for all our viewers out there? Well, the first thing is that I do watch a lot of YouTube. Okay. And I found that uh, there are a lot of YouTube videos on health, mm -hmm. on right. medicine, mm -hmm. on medical problems. Mm -hmm. The surgical videos which are loaded on the YouTube are generally meant for only surgeons. Mm -hmm. They are, they are uh, recordings of actual surgeries right. or more, of, more from the point of view of teaching surgery to other surgeons so that it helps them to learn by watching. Mm -hmm. And this came up in a big way during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, workshops were done online. That gave me the idea that actually there is no, no channel which is giving or giving knowledge and, and you know breaking the mystery of surgery mm -hmm. and surgical diseases in common terms to lay people okay okay so all my friends that's dr nikhil baljekar and that is his youtube channel surgery simplified so friends if you like this video please hit that bell icon for notification hit that like button and stay tuned for more interesting videos thank you thank you Dr. thank nikhil. you